Cat. It's Maximus here, this time with a review of this promotional product. This is the Dakota 10 watt blue laser engraver. And I did take this. These are actually, they're cheap in the world of laser engravers, but they're so pretty expensive. Dakota sent this, they want 500 bucks for this L1 unit. Once again, 10 watts, 450 nanometers. Blue lasers interact with materials much more efficiently than infrared lasers. It's just that they are limited in power. So industrial lasers are carbon dioxide and they get up to a thousand watts. Carbon dioxide lasers just don't interact with materials very efficiently, but they can just be boosted to massive amounts of power. That's why they can have big heavy duty steel cutting lasers. On these smaller units, they use blue lasers which are much more efficient. They interact with the surface of material and deliver more heat essentially per watt than infrared and other color lasers. And this thing's actually surprisingly effective and surprisingly fast, really fast, pretty darn accurate. At like 500 millimeters a minute, the accuracy is absolutely perfect. Even on their magnifying glass, the beam width is advertised as 0.2 millimeters, but I found it's actually, if you get the focus just right, you can get it darn near 0.1 millimeters. Part of the reason it even works is that they've got those 10 watt blue laser focused down to an absolute pinhead. The problem with the price is that they're just trying to hit too low of a price considering what it is. Um, because, and I'll talk about in detail in a minute, the uh, fume enclosure and their little air jet called an air assist system. There's two different types of air assist systems used on these. Some of them it's just a nozzle that kind of blows from the side, which totally sucks. And I'll get into more detail in a second, but this air assist has a nozzle that actually goes over the head of the laser itself. It's coaxial, keeps the lens clean. It's the only kind of air assist that should be used at all. It just isn't compatible with the plastic housings. That's why it, you don't <laughs> see the housings on it. Otherwise, this unit's fast. It's about 24 inches in overall outer dimensions. It has a 400 millimeter square working area. It's about 16 by 16 inches. So quite a bit of working area. And before I get too far into it, this ship, which, which is known as GRBL, I call it <laughs> Gerbil, uh, open source firmware and it actually comes with a variety of software at least they have a bunch of decent software It all comes on a memory card that just comes in the machine But it pre ships with this the open source software plugging the computer I didn't install any drivers It just detected it as a as a serial device Loaded up the open source laser gerbil software and was able just to immediately Start burning it is modern it supports dynamic or variable laser output it is using the latest 1.1 version of the firmware, so that was a big plus. You can't, it does have Bluetooth, but you have to use its, you have to update the firmware to their proprietary firmware. It actually has another accessory, which is a roller accessory to engrave like coffee mugs and stuff, but you have to use their proprietary firmware for that. I didn't get the roller unit. They offered me two accessories, so I chose the Air Assist because in the research said you have to get one of those and the fume hood because the fumes that come off lasers is different than burning something with just a flame because the little pin point of where the laser is burning is actually incinerating the material at sometimes extreme temperatures. I, the, the pinpoint head of the lasers can be extremely hot, thousands of degrees, quite frankly, and I've noticed that too. There's a difference. I've been cutting a lot of cardboard, and the smell of burning cardboard with a lighter and burning it with a laser is different. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos about these laser engravers, and I don't think people really are appreciating how carcinogenic and toxic the fumes can be. So, instead of the special roller unit, I went with the enclosure. It does have a little infrared sensor right there. I believe that's an infrared sensor. Somehow it's supposed to detect if there's a fire, and then it'll shut itself down, blink a light, and set an alarm, which I like. I also like that it has... It's actually a little billet aluminum e-stop here. So if you have any issues, you can just hit that. Older and cheaper lasers don't really have the e-stop. So I'm glad that they included that. What I'm not glad about is they just include the world's cheapest little green plastic uh, laser eye protection. And these things just, these things barely work at all. They're just absolutely terrible. I do recommend spending real money uh, maybe you don't need 
three or four hundred dollar laboratory grade, but definitely get some good quality rated um, glasses. Since I'm using an enclosure, I have the enclosure to help protect my eyes, and then I'm also using uh, these blue blocker uh, sunglasses. Since it's a blue laser, these totally just block all the blue light. There is other spectrums, particularly on the surface, where it's burning material. That material will re-emit light. That's a different spectrum than what the laser's outputting, but I, I wear these while it's in the enclosure and really protect my eyes. Just to demonstrate, here's how bad these green glasses are. I mean, it's a blue laser, so you'd think they come with glasses that at a minimum would totally block all 450, you know, 400 to 500 nanometer light. And you can see that these basically do nothing. Or even like my old blue blockers. See that? On, off. On, off. So I have no idea why they ship something like this with glasses that basically don't do anything. It's just crazy how little these do compared to something that actually is tuned to block blue light. And one last quick mention, really easy to set the tension really precisely. You can just feel the belt tension. You just, there are tooth belts, so you just want to have enough tension where the teeth won't skip, but you don't want them guitar string tight. Really easy, 2.5 millimeter button head screw. Loosen that up and you use a two millimeter hex key through the little provided holes that are on you know where all the tensioners are and you can just slightly adjust the tension until it's just right so super easy anyway enough blabbing it's hard to make a video about these things without talking a lot because they're detailed machines you can't it's hard to make like a 60 or a really short five minute video about these there's just a lot of details to talk about let's do a couple little uh demonstrations of just how quickly it moves and how fast it can etch and then we'll uh, go to the table and look at some detail of uh, its work. So a little bit more about the machine itself. Easier to get more detailed shots on holding the phone because there's this not uh, all the videos are just too far away. So the laser head, the this is an outside aluminum frame and it's a box structure so the fan actually blows through a tunnel which helps dramatically with the cooling of the heat sinks this is the air jet what they call the air assist which is there's a lot of air assist modules very few actually fit over the head of the laser this is like what more professional units use uh, this is an absolute requirement it provides pressurized air pocket around the head of the laser as well as an air jet that's coaxially coaxially aligned with the laser beam itself so it's just blowing right into exactly where the laser is, is actually cutting. Dramatically improves the cleanliness of the cuts or the etches. And big time manufacturers advertise that clean, keeping the lens cleaner, uh, clean for 10 to 50 times longer. These are providing a pressurized air pocket. The pump does have a filter in it. Uh, and so particles just, since it's high pressure air, and a tiny orifice it's basically impossible for any kind of particles to shoot back up through this little nozzle and get on the lens so it keeps the lens clean blows out the cut and for me what i found is the bottom of this the optimum focus is about a sixteenth of an inch or maybe two millimeters and it makes it just a lot easier to adjust the focus to tell you the truth just the unfortunate fact is that it's not compatible with this this is what they initially come with and the fan kind of blows through here and kind of has sweeps across these things just get really dirty don't keep the lens clean it's actually just really cheese ball um but the way this system works the part the one that goes over the head of the laser is not compatible with the outer cover or this other plastic piece what was also cheesy is the replacement screws for keeping this cover on were coarse thread when it comes with fine thread screws so that was a pretty big oversight either way i don't remind moving this stuff because um it compensates for the weight of the hose um you want to try to keep this whole assembly as light as possible but that's about the air assist and another quick thing i'll mention because it's easier when i have it tilted up like this is uh, this is a more modern one. It has a more modern design. We can see, you can almost see in there, but there are these aluminum blocks. So this is all extruded aluminum. This, these two side pieces here 
and up here solid aluminum and then this is more thin wall aluminum and this piece bolts into these via three screws two screws right into the aluminum and then they have another block so this frame is actually pretty rigid much more elegant you know the wiring is uh it's not as good as one of those wire chain things but it's still pretty good overall construction quality we can see the stepper motors are ball bearing Eiler pulleys are all ball bearing. These guide rollers are all ball bearing. So it's all ball bearing construction. As we can see, the belt and everything is actually inside a track here. The belts here are inside these tracks. So they're actually pretty hidden away and well protected. Really like that design. And then we can see we have the two parallel stepper motors for the X axis. And what the reason they do that is it helps with the performance. One of the reasons this is so fast. This axis only uses one motor results moving as the head, but the X axis here, I always get my, I think it's the right axis, is not only moving the weight of the head, but it's moving the weight of this cross member and the weight of the stepper motor. So they have twice as much power to move it, all that extra mass to keep its uh, speed up. Many other machines, they use just a single stepper motor. Sometimes it's a really big one. Sometimes it's just a smaller one Then they have some kind of like drive shaft. It's much more elegant and simple just to have two different stepper motors. The controller is pretty uh, well embedded here. There is ventilation cut out uh, for the stepper motors to get some a little bit of airflow so they don't get too hot under long running situations. So about the enclosure, as I mentioned earlier, this is something that should just come with the product, not be like another hundred bucks. That being said, it uses fiberglass reinforced some type of material i'm not exactly sure which uh it's pretty big but it's designed to hold some of the taller units and actually having the vertical space about 12 inches the whole dimensions of this about 30 by 30 by i guess 12 or 14 inches is if you work on thicker materials at least you have space to actually stand the laser machine up on blocks which is a little bit nice, but absolutely necessary. The fumes are just terrible from a laser machine. You know, I've been burning a lot of like cardboard and there's smell of burnt cardboard and then there's the smell of burnt cardboard uh, that's been incinerated by a laser. It's really pretty stinky, you really. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos and people that I don't think have appreciation on how carcinogenic and caustic the fumes uh, from any type of laser machine. So really, absolutely necessary uses these little aluminum frames it's a soft body but the aluminum frames keep it together make it pretty reasonable it could be a little bit more structural but it's okay it includes this little window which provides a little bit of extra attenuation and eye safety in addition the worst part about it is it came with a back in the corner there's a fan it came with a half watt fan. It was ridiculous. It just did, it didn't do anything. And that was the absolute worst part about it. That and the fact that it uses a very odd like three inch hose, which is also a little bit funky. I'm going to end up modifying it to use four inch dryer hose. But in the meantime, what I do is I put in a 15 watt ser computer server fan and uh, that moves a whole heck of a lot more air. It's about, it works okay. But that's the worst part about this whole uh, fume ho hood or fume enclosure is the fact that it just came with a fan that basically does not do anything Upgrading the fan to a noisy server fan uh, Is loud not as loud as a 30 watt that I had tried earlier But that thing was like a jet engine, but with the 15 watt fan uh, Enough airflow to where I do not smell the fumes when this thing is running and I have it I have some pieces of cardboard and I pipe it to the window what they have is they have a series of holes along the edge there and then another hole on that side. They do have like some places for various cutting tools and stuff like that on this side. A couple pockets. They had like these flaps that were Velcroed so that you could kind of adjust the where the air is going in. Uh, I didn't like that because you had to put something to keep them folded down. And since I put in a much higher airflow flan, uh, I just preferred to have them all open. So I just have a whole wall of air coming up. From this side a little bit from that side all going towards the back uh, of the fan and the one thing to note when you get this and set it up 
Uh, since it's fiberglass material from the manufacturing, there is just it was just coated with fiberglass. And so I had to take a wet rag and totally wipe down the inside and the outside um, to get all the fiberglass fibers out of it. Otherwise, once again, uh, this enclosure, you know, they shouldn't really be selling laser machines without the without this enclosure. Anyway, to finish up with the discussion and some samples, you know, this right here is half millimeter cardboard, about 20 thousandths. Cut this, I mean, it cuts it pretty fast. Uh, one thing to know about these lasers is power is semi-relative when it comes to the Chinese lasers, mainly because uh, it's the concentration of power or watts per millimeter squared. A 10 watt laser will have a tinier dot and deliver the same equivalent amount of cutting power that say a 40 watt laser will afford because the 40 watt laser will just have a bigger dot so it's something just to keep track of but otherwise i mean these things are just you can just cut out all these patterns they're just super duper sharp one thing i was going to point out is and i actually should probably zoom in a whole lot more on this come on camera you can do it We'll try it this way. Come on now. Okay, now I finally got the cooperating. You can just see where there's like this bit of waviness going on here. And really with these lasers, um, I mean, the, the this is a tenth of a millimeter point. I mean, this thing, you can see how big my finger is. This is you can't see any of this stuff with the naked eye so it really is super accurate but when you really get down to it with microscopic stuff when you're cutting super fast this is like 2,000 millimeters a minute which is about 80 inches a minute is how fast it's cutting it which is pretty darn quick but you get a little inaccuracies you can see the hole like these little hole shapes just aren't super great we come over to this section here, we can just see a little bit of waviness, and it just happens to be a slight bit of vibration, I think adding some weight to the frame would help. 
Now, this is one that was done, just lower laser power. This was only 5% power, but it was also at 500 millimeters a minute or about 20 inches a minute. And if we look, all the lines are just really straight. The accuracy goes way up, particularly at 500 millimeters a minute and less. It is super precise. I mean, all these objects are just super, super well-defined. And once again, I mean, this stuff is microscopic. I mean, to really give you an idea, like one of these little circles I'm looking here, which has the bolt hole patterns. We'll even shrink this down just a little bit more. That's less than four millimeters. I mean, that's an all, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch in diameter. So, I mean, the accuracy and the precision really, I mean, it is, that is legitimate. At 500 inches a minute, you're getting nice, straight, well-defined lines on objects that are near nearly an eighth inch. This is an eighth inch outer diameter and those little these little circles that it's printing right there. Like each one of these little bolt holes little holes four bolt bolt hole circles is like twenty thousandths or like half of a millimeter. So absolutely legitimate when they talk about high accuracy. Other things I wanted to point out is you can certainly import images. Let me zoom out a little bit. This was an attempt at doing an image and uh, it was going to take more than an hour just to print a small image but the variable output you actually can get a tolerable grayscale for actually doing embossing work and I had this resolution set to 10 lines a millimeter so it was really high resolution. It was, the program put out like 600,000, you know, over half a million lines of code to produce this image. If I had let the whole thing print out, it was just taking too long. But that's nothing. You try to car put a half million line code <laughs> program into an actual subtractive CNC machine, and that would thing would take months to carve out a part with a program that big. So I think that's pretty neat. And then I did some power tests here on both of the and this is like a universal test card that you would do on uh, pretty much anything. And the whole purpose is just for you to, it's a material test card. So whenever you're working with a new piece of material, you load up this program. And it just gives you various ideas on like, you know, what power levels and what feed rates will achieve cutting operations. Gives you some samples of lines and densities. And then this is just a test grid where it just increases speeds and increases uh, various power levels and you can see you can get some degree of a grayscale allows you to know if you're gonna whether you're trying to achieve a certain color whether you're actually trying to engrave an image and so you can get an idea of what the average power level you want to have set at you know what power levels it just ends up incinerating the material all the way through and we go to this 1.1 millimeter card stock and just the same thing we can see you can see how deep it's going, which areas it actually burns through, that you can get a little bit better, better grayscale. Like even on this 1.1 millimeter 80 thousandths card stock, um, it will cut out at 50% power at 400 millimeters a minute. Should be running about 16 inches a minute. And then last but not least, I did that same test pattern on a piece of anodized aluminum. It can really etch nicely on anodized aluminum. And uh, does pretty well there too. So anyway, that's my little video. Not little long video. It's These kind of products are difficult for me to review to tell you the truth because I'm not... I'm kind of discombobulated <laughs> putting together videos, but I am... Pretty impressed by this. It's a lot easier to use these machines. You can get things called DXF files, which are design exchange format. They're all over the place. Bring them in the Inkscape just to scale them, and then bring them in the laser gerbil and just start cutting. It's really pretty nice. So much easier to use. And I did want to point out real quickly here, you get the darn zoom to work on this. Is this is a, a Milwaukee Sawzall blade, a genuine Milwaukee, 
and uh, that was at 100 millimeters a minute at full power and uh, that's an alloy steel blade body and it actually did etch it actually pretty good to tell you the truth the lines are just so fine on this that you know if you're gonna do some etching it's gonna take a while on steel and uh, you're gonna have to have a heavyweight line so you can actually see it rather than this tenth of a millimeter but it even catches my fingernail a little bit it actually did dig in there and uh, so yeah you can't etch steel with these you just it's just gonna be a much slower process anyway I really appreciate Dakota sending this to me and I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and uh, subscribing. See you next time.